The gospel lesson read this morning from John is the part of the scripture referred to as Jesus' high priestly prayer. The great prayer. The theologians say it's the longest of the prayers attributed to Jesus in the gospels. And one thing comes pretty clear when reading the gospels is that John, he, he's just different. <laughs> The language in this gospel is much more flamboyant, and more poetic, um, more symbolic, almost double <laughs> meaning at times. Instead of nice, crisp statements, John offers long monologues, which is probably why John isn't included in the first three gospels, the synoptic gospels. Synoptic meaning synopsis, right? Kind of a shrink wrap version. To tell you the truth, I prefer, uh, tell it to me like I'm a two-year-old when it comes to Bible and uh, scripture and financial information, by the way. I like synopsis, so I had to dive deep into this lesson. This prayer, the great prayer, is a synthesis, the word you love to hate in graduate school, of what Jesus has done for the church through his life. To me, it was like he was writing his own reflections on his life, his wishes prior to his death, which is exactly what comes after this prayer. Arrest, betrayal, and we all know the rest. And if it's one thing I've learned in so many of the Bible studies that we've done together, it's always good to know what's being said before and after the scripture that you're focusing on or studying for that day. So, backing up, in the first five verses of chapter 17, J Jesus is praying first for himself. He says, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you sent me to do. So Jesus is saying, I did what I was sent to do. He was obedient unto death, securing eternal life for all who have a relationship with God and his Son. So he asked God, now glorify me in thine own presence. The next section, verses 6 through 19, Jesus is praying for his disciples. I have given them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and they know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you did send me. He tells them to stick together, be one as the Father and Son are one. Have joy, be victorious over evil, and fulfill the mission of representing Christ in the world. And finally, verses 20 to 26, which were read this morning, Jesus is praying for the church universal. He prays for everyone who will come to know him. Those in distant lands, far off ages who will also enter into the Christian faith. And this is quite futuristic, almost a foreshadowing, right, Nancy, our resident English professor? Yeah. And in fact, 2015 statistics shows that Christianity is by far the world's largest religion. About a third of all 7.3 billion people on earth are Christians. Jesus' prayer was that all Christians would be one, as he and his Father are one. Not unity of administration or organization or, or even liturgical unity. Christians will never organize their churches all in the same way or worship God in all the same way, believe precisely and exactly the same things, but unity of relationship, heart, Christian unity is a unity that transcends all of these differences and joins all together in love. Jesus prays in this portion of the great prayer, the glory you gave me, Father, glory being the presence of, of God's power, I give to them so that they are one, just like you and I are one. And he goes on, the love with which you have loved me May it be in them, and I in them. 
And here's Jesus is saying, these believers, they know you sent me. And my prayer is that the love with which you can love me may be in them and I in them, so that they'll all be one. <coughs> the glory of Jesus and his relationship with God was made known to others in his deeds, his works, his powers. The disciples and others saw, realized, and admitted that no one could live like that unless he was especially and uniquely near to God. Our glory is when others see in us the reflection of God. It is our glory when others see in the service we render to others and the, and the love which we show to others, nothing less than the reflection of the love of God. As with Christ, it is our glory when others see God in us. And so, my fellow Christians and community here at Luther Memorial, tag, we're it. We've been granted the glory, the power, the presence of God in us, the love of God, to go out into the world, the community, and let the world know of the love of God. In these ways, each and every one of them, today and every day, we are fulfilling the mission of leading the world to believe. May it be so. Let us pray. Blessed are those in all places and all ages who through their faith know Christ as present in the spirit in the community of believers. Amen.